Welcome to Relevance for Today, a show where you will be encouraged, inspired, and fed through the Word of God. You will find relevant teachings, tips, discussions, interviews, and more for both believers and even non-believers who are considering salvation through Jesus Christ. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Relevance for today. We are continuing on with the Bible translation series. This is part three. And I'm here to tell you right now, if you have not listened to the other two parts, please do me a favor, head back on through and go ahead and watch those first or listen to them, whichever ones you're doing. Thank you for all my listeners out there for more episodes, kingdomcommunity.tv. Head over there, Relevance for Today TV channel, or just subscribe on any podcast app, Relevance for Today. Thank you for tuning in. We're continuing on with the different Bible translations. The last one we left off with was the Amplified Bible. So we're continuing on, and we're going to jump right in because I know your time is precious. So we're continuing on. This one is the New Century Version, NCV. And this Bible is a contemporary English translation of the Bible that was first published in 1987. The NCV aims to provide a clear and easy to understand rendition of the biblical text, particularly suited for modern readers, including young people and those who may be new to reading the Bible. The New Century Version utilizes a dynamic equivalence translation approach, seeking to convey the meaning of the original biblical text in contemporary language and idioms. It prioritizes readability and accessibility, making it suitable for both personal reading and public worship. The NCV is known for its straightforward and conversational style, using a simpler vocabulary and sentence structure compared to some of the other translations. It seeks to remove potential barriers to understanding and makes the Bible more approachable for a wide range of readers. So that's pretty cool. And I'm continuing on, but hearing that you're able to give that to a young person so a young person can better understand it, and then they can eventually grow and say, you know what, I'm going to get the NIV, or I'm going to get the New King James, or the NLT, or the King James version even, you know? But the point is getting them started somewhere without them being discouraged and them understanding what they're reading, just like the Ethiopian eunuch, right, with Philip. Holy Spirit called Philip to go meet the Ethiopian eunuch on the road. He goes and sees him. Philip asks him, what are you reading? The Ethiopian eunuch says, how can I understand what I'm reading when there's no one here to teach me how? There's no one here to teach me through the scripture. So then Philip asks to jump up and he jumps up and he starts sharing with him about the word of God that Ethiopian eunuch's trying to read. And that's where we're at with Bible translations. Find the right Bible translation so you can sit at home and actually read it and understand it, right? So continuing on, the New Century Version is often appreciated for its clarity, making it helpful to those who may be new to the Bible or prefer a more modern expression of the text. It can be used for personal study, devotional reading, group discussions, and introducing others to the scriptures. Bam. Bam. That's pretty good. In fact, I will have to check and see if I have one of those somewhere because I'm mean, interested in finding out. Maybe I do. Oh, I've got the NET. Um, I'll have to check that one out. But that's another good one. Like I said, for giving to young people especially as well to help them learn the Word of God, get them into it. Okay, the next one is the Good News Translation, GNT. The Good News Translation is a dynamic equivalence translation of the Bible that was first published in 1976. The GNT aims to provide a clear and easy understanding rendition of the biblical text, making it accessible to a wide range of readers. And you remember the Good News Bible. They used to be green. It had a picture with people back in the 70s or whatever. You know what I mean? The Good News the Good News Translation was developed with a goal of presenting the biblical message in a simple and contemporary English language. It employs a dynamic equivalence approach, 
which means it seeks to convey the meaning of the original text in a way that is faithful to the original intent, while also using a language and idioms that are easily understood by modern readers. The GNT is often appreciated for its readability and clarity. It uses plain language and strives to communicate the message of the Bible in a straightforward manner. The translation is suitable for personal study, devotional reading, outreach, and for individuals who may be new to reading the Bible or have difficulty with more complex language. Important right there. For people who are having a hard time, you give them um, an IV or you give them a New American Standard Bible, and they're looking at this thing and they're like, huh, how am I going to understand this? But then you give them the Good News Bible, and they're able to start with something. Then you pass on the New Living Translation or an NIV or the New King James, and then they can dig deeper into it. They get the basic understanding, and then they flow to the next one. Because at the end of the day, it's still going to say Christ crucified, raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father, Holy Spirit back with man when we ask Jesus Christ into our life and repent of our sins, we're walking with the Holy Spirit within us. We're the new man in Christ, the way Adam was originally supposed to be in the beginning. So as long as it points you to the cross and acknowledges Jesus Christ as the Son of God, that our Heavenly Father created this world, that's what's important. The Good News Translation has gained popularity for its accessibility and its ability to convey the biblical message in a way that is easily understood by a wide range of readers, including young people and those with English as a second language. Really neat. So you're taking and using the tools that you need to help others come closer to Christ. That's what it's important. Second language English, hey, grab a Good News Bible. Next one is the New English Translation. This is a modern English translation, NET, of the Bible that was first published in 2005. The NET Bible is unique in that it was one of the first translations to be published with extensive translator's notes, providing insights into the translation process and offering explanations of various textual and linguistic choices. The NET Bible was produced by a team of biblical scholars and translators who aim to provide a faithful and readable translation of the original Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek texts. The translation approach used in the NET Bible is primarily dynamic equivalence, seeking to convey the meaning and message of the original language in clear and natural English. One of the notable features of the NET Bible is its extensive set of translator notes, which provides valuable insights into the translation's decisions one of the notable features of the NET Bible is its extensive set of translator notes, which provide valuable insights into the translation decisions and textual variants. These notes offer explanations, alternative rendering, and discussions of alternative manuscript readings, making the NET Bible a valuable resource for deeper study and analysis. The NET Bible is available in both print and digital formats and has gained popularity among individual scholars and Bible students who appreciate the transparency and scholarly depth provided by the extensive translator notes. It is used for professional study, teaching, preaching, and academic research. It's important to note that while the NET Bible's translation is highly regarded, the inclusive of extensive notes may make it appear more academically oriented compared to some other translations. Nonetheless, the NET Bible is widely respected for its commitment to accuracy and its provision of valuable insight into the translation process. Wow. So that right there, that's a good Bible. That's one of those Bibles that you definitely have as a third or a fourth on the side that you can go to on those days when you want to dig in a little deeper, go in the NET, learn, read the word, learn about the translation style, learn the extra nuggets and notes that are in it and go from there. And of course, when it comes to scholars and translators, you read the actual text, but you also read the study notes, and then you have to discern and, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in the understanding of the passages that you're reading based on the notes given in the Bible. 
the Holloman Christian Standard Bible. This is a formal equivalence translation first published in 1999. It is known for its accuracy and readability. The Common English Bible, CEB, is a modern English translation of the Bible that was first published in 2004. The HCSB aims to provide a balance between accuracy and readability using a translation approach known as optimal equivalence. The Hallman Christian Standard Bible was produced by a team of biblical scholars and translators associated with the Southern Baptist Convention and the publishing division of Lifeway Christian Resources. The translation team sought to provide a faithful rendering of the original biblical text while also prioritizing clarity and accessibility for contemporary readers. The HCSB incorporates modern English language and expressions, making it easier for readers to understand and engage with the text. It maintains a commitment to accuracy and fidelity to the original languages, striving to convey the intended meaning of the biblical authors. The Holloman Christian Standard Bible is widely used by individuals, churches, and study groups for personal reading, devotional study, teaching, and preaching. It has gained popularity for its balance between accuracy and readability, making it suitable for a broad range of readers. It's worth noting that the HCSB underwent a revision process and was rebranded as the Christian Standard Bible, CSB, in 2017. The CSB retains the translation philosophy and the principles of the HCSB while incorporating updates and improvements based on feedback and ongoing biblical scholarship. Therefore, the Holloman Christian Standard Bible, HCSB, is the predecessor of the Christian Standard Bible, CSB, and the CSB is the current version of the translation. Bam. So that was good to, to learn that. But uh, basically, if you have the CSV, then that is the, or the CSB rather, sorry, then that is the current translation of the HCSB. So many different translations, aren't there, folks? That's one of the things. There's just so many different ones, but uh, you just have to learn them. I mean, that's what it's all about. Get to learn which one is which and go from there so you'll know the best translation for you. And the last one we're going to do for this study is going to be the message, MSG. The message is a contemporary English paraphrase of the Bible. The message was translated by Eugene H. Peterson and first published in its entirety in 2002. The message is unique in that it seeks to present the biblical text in a highly readable and accessible form, using modern language and idioms. It aims to convey the essence and the spirit of the original biblical text in a way that resonates with contemporary readers. While the message is not a strict word-for-word -word translation, it captures the overall meaning and message of the Bible in a thought-for-thought -thought manner. It emphasizes readability, clarity, and capturing the narrative flow and emotional impact of the original writings. The message is often appreciated for its fresh and engaging style, making the Bible more approachable for those who may find traditional transla translations challenging or less engaging. It is commonly used for personal devotional reading, as well as for public readings, teaching, and general understanding of the biblical message. It's important to note that because the message is a paraphrase rather than a formal translation, it may not be suitable for detailed study or theological analysis. It is best used alongside other more literal translations when conducting depth in-depth study. Overall, the message offers a unique and contemporary perspective on the biblical text, presenting it in a way that can resonate with modern readers and help bring its message to life. So that's really important, folks. And one of the things right there kind of wrapped up as I'm wrapping up this three-part series is the fact that one of the things it said is how it may not be suitable for detailed study or theological analysis, but it can be used alongside other translations. That's what it's about. That's what's important. So they're not saying this Bible translation is garbage because it leaves this out or it leaves that out or it explains this this way and not that way. No, it's saying you take that version and you pair it up along with another version and it's going to help you in a study. Use this one for doing your reading 
You know, when you want to get up in the morning, you want to get in the Word and do some reading. But if you want to study and get some paper out, you're better off grabbing a different translation. And that's the way it's describing it. So it's really important, folks. And, you know, I just want to share this with you guys. It's important. This is the final wrap-up of this series. And it's a statement that I need to make. And there it is. It's important that you choose a translation that you find easy to understand and that resonates with you. Ultimately, the most important thing is to read and study the Bible regularly. It's the Word of God and has the power to transform lives. It's important to know that no translation is perfect and different translations may convey the same passage of Scripture differently. It can be helpful to compare different translations to get a better understanding of the text. Amen. It's really important, folks. I really want to take the time to share all this with you. And remember, Bibles come in all shapes and sizes, even the Action Bible. Once again, I talked about these in part one. Great Bible. I love it. I mean, it comes in here and everything's illustrated. The entire Bible is illustrated. It might not be word for word to the point where every single verse is in there, but you've got things like the Ten Commandments. You know what I mean? Moses on the hill. All kinds of things. Going through Aaron making the golden calf. You know what I mean? It's broken down in there. The main key stories, the main key characteristics of the Bible, the main points in the Bible are in like the action Bible. You know, then you have Bible Force, the first heroes Bible. This one highlights the heroes. And I'm showing you these ones because they're great for young people. But it goes in there. It highlights the heroes in the Bible. The river stops flowing. Um, Saul's jealousy. The siege of Jerusalem. The priest, hero of a priest. The baptism of Jesus. You know, there it is right there. Amazing. And there's other Bibles that I didn't mention, like the complete Jewish Bible. Here's the complete Jewish Bible right here. Clues the five, first five books of Moses also known as the Pentateuch, and it goes through, and it's the Bible in here. And it breaks it down, Jeremiah. I mean, it's all in here, the book of Acts. And as you can see, the format's different. Different format, but that's the Jewish Bible, the complete Jewish Bible. Um, sometimes you'll find a study Bible that might have someone's name on it, and don't get discouraged. It's still the Word of God. But this one is the Wearsby Study Bible, Warren W. Wearsby, New King James Version. But in it, what's awesome about it, and this is small print. This is a little too small for me. But you see how the Bible is at the top. You've got the Bible verses in, at the top, and at the bottom, you've got all this writing. That's Wearsby. That's Warren Wearsby's writings and his breakdown of studying these patches of Scripture. Uh, there's some other ones. You have uh, the expanded Bible, okay? So the expanded Bible, it breaks down the Word of God as well. It breaks it down even deeper, almost like some of the other ones. But you can see in there. See how you've got all that in there? And I know I'm just showing you this on the screen, and it looks like it's just a bunch of words. But it breaks it down. It shows you more words in parentheses the same way a couple of the other Bibles do as well. Then this one I really like. This is the KJVER, red letter, Holy Bible, okay? So the ER, um, let me look it up here and make sure. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, but it's the King James Version. But what it is is they took out like the these and thus and thous, not thus, but you get the point. But when you come in here and read it, um, for example, might as well start in the beginning, right? Yes. Now, once again, I hope you folks really enjoying this. I'm sorry I should have had this page marked before I actually just started saying that and jumping right in. But it says here, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And it doesn't say, and the Spirit of God moveth upon the face of, of the waters. You know what I'm saying? But it's a great translation. I love the large print on it. 
really good Bible. This one is the KJVER. KJVER. And of course, some of your Bibles, you can get the tabs for finding the actual books. You know, if you don't know where it's at, and you know, people get nervous where they don't want to look in the index to find a passage or to find a chapter, but you can just use the little thumb portions and go right to the Bible. So you've got ones like that. We've got this one right here. This is the McCarthy Study Bible, large print. And what I liked about, look how big this Bible is. Got a little tape on it there, compared to a regular size Bible. But what I like about this one is when you open it up, look how big the words are. And the study sections at the bottom, you got the verses and whatnot up at the top. And I already showed you folks the NIV one I had sitting here. And this is the same thing. It's a study Bible. It's a big, thick one. But as you come in, you can see you've got the words, you've got the study sections at the bottom that you can read, and it helps you break down the Bible. So really important, folks. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. And then also, let me show you this last one before I close, because this is pretty neat. This one is called a chronological study Bible, okay? Get that in front of my face so you can see it. The chronological study Bible, and I love this one. It's beautiful. I mean, the pages have color in them and everything, and... Uh, it's an awesome Bible because what this does is it puts the entire Bible in chronological order. So when you're reading your normal Bible, it's not in order of exactly chapter after chapter, book after book. There's certain books that came before other ones at certain times, just like when Paul's writing, the apostles are traveling and things like that. It might jump from one to another when they were in those different locations. So the Chronological Bible, really neat Bible to have. This one is the New King James translation. Great Bible. Um, look for the Bibles to go on sale. That's what I do at Christian Book. And uh, when they're on sale, hey, load up. Get yourself some different ones that you want to try. And don't be afraid to get in the Word of God. This is the uh, New King James. <clears throat> the New King James ones will go on sale. And this one's large print. See how large those words are? It's fantastic. So you can look up giant print, um, large print. This is a reference edition. And uh, what happens is as you're reading it, it'll have a little reference. And down at the bottom, there'll be references at the bottom of the page, down at the bottom. So you can actually go to different parts of the Bible and dig in deeper. So just like Indiana Jones, when he's on a mission and he's got his book, he's got his journal, he's digging in and he's going to find out some treasure. That's the same way I want to encourage you all to be when it comes to the word of God. I truly hope these Bible translations breaks down are going to help you. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you'll take the time to actually listen more than once, that way you can learn which Bible translation is best for you, or even do your own personal study. Get online, get on Google, type in some Bible translations. What Bible translation is better for me if I like Queen Elizabeth English? Which one's better for me if I like to read it as a novel and so forth? And get into the Word. The whole point of this whole three-part series is to learn what Bible translation you need to read so you can get into the Word. I forget the percentage, I've shared it before, but it's like 90 some percent of believers don't even open their Bible. But maybe once a week, if that, 30% or something like that. I'll have to put the statistics up sometime. I've done it before, but basically there's a small amount of Christians who actually read the Word of God. But we'll be on Facebook, we'll be on Twitter, we'll be on all these other places watching and all these other things taking up our time, but we won't take time out for the Word of God. Folks, it's time to turn this around. It's time to step up, step in, dig in, open up the Word of God, read it. We are blessed to have the Word of God, the creator of our universe, of our world, of our bodies, of ourselves. We have His Word. We need to get into it. I hope that encourages you. I say that in love. Let's pray. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for being able to do this three-part series. I truly hope that my listeners and watchers are going to be blessed by what they read, by what they watch, by what they hear. 
So at the end of the day, they'll go out and order themselves a Bible or they'll blow the dust off the Bible they already have that they haven't opened yet. And they'll start getting into your word, Lord. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to them in a mighty way as they open up your word so they'll know that you are real. So they'll know that the Holy Spirit's real and that they'll know that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, down for all of us because you love us so much. And we have your word and we need to dig in. So I just thank you. I ask you to just watch over all my listeners and watchers, protect them and keep them safe. I thank you for all these things. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hey, there you have it, folks. Thank you so much. Get in the word and stay there. Yes. Get in the word and stay there. It's very important. If you don't have a Bible, let me know in the comment section because we'll find out somebody who's near you that can give you a Bible. You need to get into the Word of God. We've got all kinds of books and distractions and phones and tablets and computers and all this other stuff. We need the Word of God. Also, look up Bible apps for your phone, for your tablets, for your computers. There's some great ones out there like the Version Bible where you can download it. You can get daily devotionals on it for free. You can actually read the Word of God, download the different translations, and you can get in the Word of God when you're out and about when you're going for walks, you can have it read to you and so much more. It's so important, folks. I can't tell you enough. The most important book that you will ever read. The most important, life-changing book. The Bible. Remember the acronym that somebody made up? Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth. B-I-B-L-E. Love you guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Remember, kingdomcommunity.tv, you can watch the episodes or head over to YouTube on Relevance for Today, Stephen Lewis. You can watch my episodes there as well. But it's all free, folks, so that you can be blessed, so you can come closer to Christ. Hey, thank you. Love you. Also, look up Stephen Lewis at For God's Glory Alone Ministries, where I've got over 400 writings and teachings check them out as well as other people whenever i send you to a site like kingdomcommunity.tv and for god's glory alone ministry be sure to check out other people's works other people's teachings other people's messages while you're there hey with that being said i love you all i appreciate you take care of yourselves stay blessed and less stressed peace and love to you all